Deuteronomy again, the sixth chapter of the fifth through the ninth verse. Another verse added on from last week, but I want to read that to you this morning. We're going to be talking just a little bit to you about families. And this morning, before we get started in families, some of you this morning have some situations that you've had. What is family? What does it mean to you? What has God done for you? What's God done for you and your family? As you're looking the scripture up, uh, I want to ask a question here. What has God, how is your relationship with God was last week? This week, how is your relationship with God affecting your family? What is it doing for you and your family? Last week, my relationship with God, where is it at? Is it where it needs to be? Am I giving God my all? My, am I surrendering my all to Him? Is that where I want to be in my life? Well, what happens when that happens in my life? How does that affect my family? How can it affect my family? How have I been in my life with my family? I've asked a question to, to James Larry. Larry is very open about his family. He has no problem speaking about his past. But I asked him this question the other day. Larry, give me just a couple minutes of, of uh, your feeling there. Stand up where the folks can hear you well. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, for allowing me to share with you. I've asked the Lord to take control of me. Spirit lead me with what to say. And first of all, amazing grace, I see the stuff. That's safe. Oh, that's right. Me. Amen. I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Mm. I can look back across my life and see what a relationship really means. And <clears throat> I have to admit, <clears throat> it's probably one of my weakest areas of my life relationship and <clears throat> I want you to understand something they all you hear about what matters now and I want you to understand relationships matter and it affected my life and my life affected my children and I want you to understand what I'm saying what I did in my past I brought over into my children you know but it's been covered by the blood and I want you to understand that but I've seen through, God's allowed me to see through other eyes. He allows me to see my past through the actions and things my children do. And I've seen what I've done by what they do. And my daughter and I, we've talked about it. And Ronnie and I talked about it. It's like a generational curse. And But God covered it. It's been covered by the blood. Amen. And I've seen things change in my life in the last seven years. That relationship has been restored. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So therefore, Larry, the relationship with, with God and family go hand in hand. And then the thing about the family, here's the thing, guys. Some of you are here sitting here, and you've had some things going on in your family, in your life, that you wish you had done different, that you wish you had done different with your children, in your family. You wish you had had uh, different things go on, or you had been different. Your relationship with God would have been different as you was raising your children to see the trickle-down effect, if you will. But I want to tell you something. That generational thing, you can look back and say, Mama made me do it, Daddy made me do it, Grandpa made me do it, or this happened to me back here. But I want to tell you, if you're living back here, then you ain't going to be able to get out here. So what I'm talking about today is you've got to go ahead and break that generational curse and say, in the name of Jesus, I let it go. In the name of Jesus, it does not have hold on me anymore. I press on to the mark of the high calling of God. I can't look back. Paul said, if I look back, I'm going to see myself killing Christians. I'm going to see myself leading a protest of, of people to come in and kill Christians. That's not right. I can't do that. It's going to tear me down. But if I if I don't look back and I've got my eyes on the prize, which is God Almighty Himself, then I'm stepping forward. You see, when we look back, we're stepping back. We're losing ground when we're looking back. We learn from back here, yes, but we don't dwell back in... Hey, that, that takes me to... Oh, if we wanted to go into another part of the Scripture where, where the, Moses was trying to lead some people out of bondage, I, my goodness, they had been 
they had been in bondage and slavery for all these years, and he's trying to get them out of there. God has said, you can do this. I want you to be the one. And he's trying to lead them, but, man, he's trying to lead them, but they want to go every which way. After a while, they forgot about what they was living in back here. And he's trying to get them over into the promised land. It's just like God. God is trying to lead us away from back here and get us over into the promised land, if you will. Can the church say amen? Let go of yesterday and grab a hold of today. I want to ask a teenager here. I want to ask my little buddy back here. Art and Leanne has a, a son, Hunter. Hunter is just one of the nicest fellas you ever want to meet. Guys, you don't want to mess with Hunter. He is just solid muscle, and but he loves Jesus. Hunter is the one I want to tell you about that was the 3% baby. Back at Elmore, when I pastored there, uh, Art and Leanne was wanting a child, and they got to the point, they said, well, we're going to... We, we want a child so bad, and they was considering some adoption too, which is nothing wrong with that. That's a great thing to do. And, and uh, they said, the doctors told us that we just a 3% chance we can, we can have a baby. And so, Hunter, about, we said, let's go ahead and pray for that 3% baby. About six weeks later, Leanne and, and uh, Art comes to church, and they said, we've got some good news. I'm going to have a baby. I said, a 3% baby. Glory to God. Woo! And my goodness, he's 110% today. He's in college today, and he is, he is leading some folks to Jesus. He's talking to them about, Hunter, what is this relationship with family? What does this mean to you? Well, I think a relationship with a family and God, I mean, we can, we can look at family in a couple different ways. Like, you can look at it through the blood in our veins. But I see family as people you beat, your neighbors, your church, your church followers, you know, and even your enemies at times, because these are the people that will take you away from God and people who can help you lead, lead you to the Lord. Now, what I think is, is that family and God come close together because, you know, they're both inseparable. How can you love anybody else? Mm. You know? I mean, just the same way that God showed us. I mean, if you don't have any family, if you don't look to anybody, that cross up there that Jesus died on, that's one we can all look to. Oh, that's so good. So therefore, Hunter, if we love our family, we're going to love people. It'll, it'll give, and if we love God, we're going to love our family. If we love family, we're going to love people. All people. I'm not talking about some people. I'm talking about all people. Thank you. Give my buddy a good hand here. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to know that God don't want us to love some people. He wants us to love everybody. He, 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 you know, his desire is for us to be a light. When we go out these doors, that people will see the love of Jesus glowing all over us. Because you see the scripture in Deuteronomy 6, 5, and 9. Let's read it together here. Or you can read it with me. It says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Now listen to this part right here. This is where I went a step farther than last week. Impress them. Let me say that again. Impress them on your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors. Your next door neighbor, your down the street neighbor, the people at Kroger's, the people at Walmart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you're with your family, and when you walk along the roadside, when you lie down, and when you get up. Oh, tie them as a symbol on your hand and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Glory to God. I built several houses. Me and Brenda, we, bless her heart, my family stayed together because she stayed with me, and I've been a knucklehead a lot of times, but she's been a rock for me. But, boy, we built some houses, and when you build a house, you and a, a wife build a house, 
you are testing your relationship with God. Anyway, and, and saying that, I want to say this, that we built several houses, and in those houses, a big old magic marker would come out, and if anybody ever takes a piece of drywall off or a, a floor up or whatever, they're going to see, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Come unto me, you that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. They're going to see scripture, because I wrote scriptures on the floor, on the wall. My goodness, it was just scripture everywhere. I love it. You see what I'm talking about? Write it down. Write it. Have it all over the place. In my daughter's shop, uh, Leanne works there. I told Leanne just the other day, I looked around, and everywhere I saw, it was Scripture, Scripture, Scripture. And I said, man, if people don't come in here and see some Word of God, they're going to miss it because it's everywhere. I see people pull their phones out, and they start taking pictures of the Scriptures that are around the wall in that shop. I see a shop with a group of ladies in there. That's family, by the way. They are considered uh, the sisters of the the hairstylist in the family that comes together and it's about 12 or 14 of them stylists in there and my goodness they come together and whoa my goodness they started praying for Brenda I've already told you this I think but when they did each one of them they went from one to the other that you would have thought that this one does and talk about Jesus much and they don't and you know sometimes people are shy when it comes to praying did you know they went all the way around the horn and they prayed for Brenda, each one of them out loud. Leanne, she couldn't sleep that night. She was on such cloud nine. Rhonda was so torn up about it. You see, that's family coming together. And when Jesus is in the midst of the family, he's in the midst of the storm. He's in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. Oh, impress it on your children. You must talk about it. Let them know the value of that. You see, family is a balancing act. The goal is for everyone to end up on the same side. Many times people hold on to their hurt feelings and use them as an excuse to not show up for their families. People must stop showing their scars and wounds as trophies and have the wisdom to have conflict resolution. You see, I need to say this once again as I said earlier. You see, when you drive home today, you're going to realize when you're sitting in your car, you've got a great big windshield on the front of your car. And you've got a little bitty rear view mirror. And the reason that windshield is so large and the rear view mirror is so small, it is because what's happened in your past is not near as important as what's in your future. The more you talk about negative things in your life, Christian people, church people, the more you call them negative things in. Speak victory. Speak victory, not defeat. Come on. It's, it's too much to be joyful about. Yes, you've gone through some valley. Yes, Aunt Susie didn't treat you right. Yes, jo Jolene left you out of her will. But I want to tell you, God has you in His will, in the palm of His hands. And He's saying, mm, I've got greater things for you than anything this world could ever offer when you grab a hold of the nail-scarred hands of Jesus and watch Him. Oh, my goodness, chills is running up both sides of my leg this morning. Speak victory, not defeat. You cannot hang out, friends, with negative people and expect to live a positive life. Well, listen, stones are going to be thrown. Stones of judgment, discouragement, or doubt may be thrown at you. You can't stop them, but you can make the choice to keep your walls up and not let them affect you. Listen, today, Christian family begins with a personal commitment to God. The starting place for fixing the family is in fixing the inhabitants who live there. One of the greatest blessings we can receive in this life is the love of a family. And the bonds that ex exist between its members are sacred. It's no accident that the Bible is filled with passages that explain our relationship to God by comparing it to our relationship with our Father. Oh, our earthly families are intended to reflect God's unconditional love. Listen, husbands. Husbands are called to love their wives as what? As Christ loved His church. 
What in the world? How good does he love his church? Come on, guys. Don't get the he-man deal that you're in charge. You're large and in charge. Woman, you listen to me. Don't speak unless the man gives you direction. Listen, you better get down from that and realize that God wants you to love that woman. He wants you to love that wife as he loved the church. How great a love is that. And wives and wives are called to devote themselves to their husband as the church devotes itself to Christ. Emulating the love that exists between God and his church in a family is no easy feat. Oftentimes, families struggle with emptiness, a lack of communication, and, and there's some pain that comes along with that, too, when you don't communicate. They don't realize the resolution they are, are straining for is simpler than the battle they're fighting. If your house has a damaged foundation, it's be, it, it doesn't matter how much spackling you use on that cheap rock wall, honey. You've got a little crack come in it because you've got a damaged foundation. There's a little problem with a foundation problem, and all the cracks can come in, and the doors don't want to seem to open and close the way they should. I want you to understand, those. if your house has that damaged foundation, it doesn't matter how much spackling you use, those cracks will keep reappearing because that foundation is not where it needs to be. In the same way, a family can't succeed if you aren't maintaining its foundation. A Christian family begins and ends with each member's personal commitment to God. To get to where you want to be, you need to know your destination. Oh, keep your eyes turned and tuned in to God's love. That's the ideal. And once you've aligned yourself with God's plan, Oh, with you, the rest will fall into place. Joshua said, mm, what did he say? As for me and my house, what? We will. Oh, my goodness. You better get back here. Do you think that's what you want? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on. If you want that, let me hear you say it together. As for me and my house, we will serve. Oh, that's good stuff. Well, when we talk about that, let's talk about some encouragement. Let's talk about some things that we, we're going to have to do. What your kids and your children see you do as they grow up is what likely they'll do when they grow up. How you react to situations, how you come across with words and actions to your wife or to your family or friends. Even, my friends, if today if you're here and you're, you're a single person today, your family, anybody around you, they, they can see your reaction of how you respond to whatever the matter is that's going on in your life. How do you respond? Do you know somebody's watching you? Healthy parents don't find time. They make time. And children, people, that's what they want. Can you give me just a little time? Can you just slow down to listen to me? I had a guy tell me this. I was He was talking to me, and I just about worn out, and I was talking to him, and he started talking like I'm looking at Raymond, and all of a sudden while he was talking, I, I was looking off and looking around and thinking 14 different things and wasn't listening to him. I was, li I couldn't hear him, but anyway, his name was Keith, uh, you know Keith, and, and I'm, I'm, he's talking away, and he said, hey, 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 are you listening? I said, oh, yeah. I never forgot that. Because I was looking off, I wouldn't be paying attention to him. I was, but I wasn't. You understand what I'm saying? People need you. They need you to understand. They just want your time, just a little bit of time. But I don't have the time. What are we doing to take us away from our people? What are we doing to take us away from our family? We are, we're doing so many things and our mind's turning in so many ways that our family is put on the back burner so many times that we don't take the time to listen. The little children, they're playing. They say, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Hey, uh, get, get off of the TV. Daddy, Daddy, are you hearing me? So many times we tune them out. And when before you can know it, wow, they're grown up and they're gone. They're grown and they're gone. And now we got teenagers for children and grandchildren and what have you. Well, today we just need to take the time and slow down. This morning I needed to take the time and slow down. 
I was in a run. I had a board meeting this morning early, and so I, I was trying to get everything done where I could make sure I was here on time. So Brenda's doing her deal in the kitchen, and she didn't get to check me out to see if I put my clothes on or not. She looks at me, and she says, Oh, baby, that shirt's not going to get it. Oh, honey, that tie, it's not my favorite. I said, What, is this all right? She says, Yeah, it's not my favorite. Well, I know. Go back in there and change it. Well, this morning, listen to this. Y'all haven't even noticed. Not, not, and I want you to tell me, if anybody's noticed, you can say amen, all right? But I want to tell you something. This morning, it's all me. I did this. I put that together. And Brenda didn't have anything to do with it. And I get out of the truck, and she looks at me, and she said, Baby, those pants don't match that coat. You notice? Well, it was. Oh, no. No. Oh, darn it. I had three that noticed, Brenda. So, so see, therefore, we've got to have each other. We've got to slow down, take the time, give the time, and be there for one another. Oh, I've got so much stuff here, but I'm going to have to wind this down. Healthy parents know how to say, I love you, in more than just I love you ways. When I was a little boy, I spent a, many a Saturday morning uh, watching some cowboy shows and some cartoons, and, um, and, and the cowboy shows back then were so good. Roy Rogers and Gene Autry, all of you teenagers in here remember Roy Rogers and Gene Autry, I'm sure. Uh, but do you remember the words to the chorus? Some of you teenagers, do y'all remember the words when Gene Autry or Roy was saying, Home, home on the range. Amber knows it. Where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is us and the ah oh, you got it where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day it's sad to say that many of our homes today aren't like the home on the range Rather than seldom hearing a discouraging word, many of us live in homes where seldom is heard an encouraging word. It's so easy for us when we're tired and weary and stressed out to become more negative and critical and, and only notice what's wrong or what someone else has failed to do. A lack of encouragement leads to discouragement and depression, which is the number one mental health problem of our time. God wants us to enjoy our everyday life. I've got to close right here. I'll have to stop this and pick it up later. But I want you to know this morning in John, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse, that Jesus died for us so that we may what? Enjoy our life. You see, the Scripture says the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. That's the power of darkness and the power of the enemy. It comes to try to rob us of our victories by anything it can do to take away the joy and steal our joy. I rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Don't you try to steal my joy. Don't you try to steal this congregation's joy. You tell him in the name of Jesus, get away from me. You don't have no right over me. You can't steal what I've already got accomplished. God has said, I will be with you. He's going to be with you. So you're not going to steal. You're not going to kill and destroy. I came that they may have what? That they may have and enjoy life. Life. That you might enjoy that life and have it in abundance. And in abundance means to the fullest till it overflows. Anybody want to step into the overflow? I'm tired of I'm tired of trudging around in, in the old old sludge and the mud and just trying to get through life the best way I can when Jesus said, Come on, get out of there, boy. Get your foot up here on this solid rock and keep it up there because I'm going to go before you. I'm going with you. I'll speak through you. I'll live through you because my grace is sufficient for my every need. Do you know him? Do you really know Jesus? Do you really have a relationship with him? Because if you do, it's going to trickle down on your family. And then when it trickles down on your family, it's going to trickle out into the church and to the world. My next sermon I'll be bringing to you will be talking about your relationship as a church. Speaking of our relationship with God, Madison was here this 
morning to call. 